G'day everyone, welcome to 42 Fishing and Lures. So on this little video I'm making soft plastics. It's a the American terms first I suppose. It's an eight and a half inch big paddle tail swim boat. Australian terms because most of us are Australian at the moment. It is 21 and a half centimetres or it is 210, sorry, 215 mil. Depends if you look at it really. So what I've had to do, I've had a lot of experimenting and I've got myself to a final product which looks a bit like this. I hope it takes focus. I've stuck a magnet in the belly. So when I use a couple of split rings and a swivel, it attaches from this point. It sits on the belly quite nicely. Probably going to use a um, 2 0 treble on it. The 1 is not quite big enough, I feel. You can also do a rig on it from the top. This video is primarily more of a how I make the mold. So at start off, sheet of aluminium. And what I've done is got some double back sticky tape and some glad wrap. Glad wraps just stop it from being sticky. What I then do, you screw my master onto the board like so, which I'll do right now. Phillips head screwdriver. So the reason I'm screwing this onto the board is because I've had a few problems with it floating. Being wood, it's very buoyant. It's the same material you make all my other lures out of, which works great for molding, for um, designing and stuff, making it all nice and smooth. Doesn't really work that well when it comes to making it stick. I was putting on a bit of silicone, on a bit of plasticine, but the problem with that is that with the plasticine it creates some sort of a reaction between the rubber mold I use, the two part rubber, it comes out really firm which is excellent. So the two part rubber I'm using is that stuff just there. It's a 50-50 mix, so it's easy to pour. And it comes out looking like this. But I'm not fully happy with the mould, so I'm going to change it. As I sort of said, the, the plasticine reacts with it. And it's all sticky on top, hence all the dirt and everything there. So I'm going to make a new mould, which will be the king of masters, I'm hoping. Also, what I use for the mould is a um, box. And then you apply Vaseline all around it so the rubber doesn't stick to it. Place it over the lure like so. Now, what you need to do after that is make sure it's on the right way as well, it always helps. That'll be it. Run some plasticine along the edge here so there's no leaks. I have had a couple of um, major disasters while I've been doing it and made myself some non stick matting, which I really didn't want to do. Non slip matting, I should say. This is the, um, the mold for the rubber. As you can see, it's quite strong unless it's really thin. I'll get back to you when I start pouring the mold and everything else. Alright, so what I've done now, taken the box, placed it over the lure, ran all around the box with the marking texture. Reason being, 
So I need to know sort of where I can and can't go when I'm running the Vaseline onto it. The reason you put a Vaseline on it is just so it releases from the rubber once it's all formed. Rubber takes about what, six to seven hours to do it. And all I'm doing now is trying to make a nice smooth coat of Vaseline on this. Top and bottom. And I'll do it on the um, inside the inside of the box as well, so it releases nicely. Okay, so what I'm doing now is running over the master mold with a bit of uh, glad wrap on my finger, just to try and make it as smooth as I possibly can, hoping it comes out of the mold perfectly and nice and shiny. Obviously smooth is going to be the better way to finish it off. Otherwise you get like, the, um, comes out sort of little white cracks and bubbles through it. And then you have to heat it up or run some Vaseline inside the mold itself to stop it from happening. Top to bottom. Ah, oh, you bastard. Without doing that, hope, preferably. The glad wrap came off my finger. It's not what I want to happen. Let's try again. That's better. Okay, so now I've finished stroking my wood. I mean, making it nice and shiny. It doesn't really help very much, does it? There's always a little glitch on this somewhere, isn't there? Being a perfectionist makes things very hard at times. Now I've got to fix it again. Bugger. Little bit of glad wrap. Hope I don't bugger it up because I put a lot of effort into this. That's not going to work, is it? Haha. Uh. -ha. This is what I had prepared earlier. Get real white. Being a perfectionist will give you very good finishes, but rather frustrating at the same time at times. Little bits and pieces just to fix up. Now that's nice and shiny and smooth. Now what we're going to do is take our box, place it over like so, okay that looks pretty even, that's about right. Push it down nice and tight. Take a Stanley knife. I'm going to cut around the glad wrap so it comes off. Um, plasticine around the edge of the bottom of the box. That will secure the box. And it will also stop it from leaking. So my theory goes anyway. I don't see why that won't work. Okay, so now I take the plasticine, use little bits at a time, make it all nice and soft with my fingers, warm it up a bit. Make it nice and long. It's going to be a bit hard to do on camera. I'm going to run it 
along the edge here. Like so. I'll push it in nice and tight, smooth it up and down. Repeat this process all the way through just to make sure it's not going to leak on me. All right, so I've got on a nice little flat base. The screws which are under it have been counted because it's going to be unbalanced. A little magnets on there, they protrude higher than the screws. And the magnets are not going to go anywhere as well, make it a bit safer, I suppose. All I need to do now is do a slow pour over the mold. Slow pour because I want all the air bubbles to come out of it. We'll give it we'll give the rubber a mix and I'll show you what I mean. So I'll put the two-part solution in. Give it a really good stir. I have found that if you give it a stir on a bit of a 45 degree angle. It helps get everything from the bottom up and around as well. Everyone probably knows that, but just something I'm saying anyway. Give it a good stir now. What I'm going to do is give it a good couple of bashes on the foot on this. Try and bring the air bubbles up. Less air bubbles the better. I'll let it sit for a minute or two before I pour it. Try and get rid of most of the air bubbles. When I pour it, I'll do its initial pour nice and slowly. And let it sit for a couple more minutes. Get all the air bubbles out of that. And then we'll see what happens. Alright, so I'm pretty confident I've got most of the bubbles out. I know there's still a few in there, but pour it nice and slowly. Not from a big height. Straight over the top. Once I've done this, I'm going to let it sit there a bit longer. And I'll get back to you when it's fully finished. Okay, the moment of truth. It's night time now because I can watch my daughter play basketball. And they won, which was a bonus. Looks pretty. Yeah, it all looks good. Let's find out. And that's my daughter in the background. So we got no real cold cracking, really good lamination. I like it. All right, so this is the last part of our journey. The color doesn't really do it justice on the camera, unfortunately. It's a bit greener than what you're seeing at the moment. It's a real nice sort of pearl color, for, white pearl for the belly as well. About 22 centimeters or eight and a half inches. Nice slow movement. Bit of body roll there. Not too bad. 